Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. It's a good thing to be in the presence of God this evening again. And it's my pleasure that we can reach you today again. We give God praise who has ordained all things according to his purpose. Blessed be his name forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want to welcome you all viewers. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, and you are seeing this video and this channel for the first time, I want to welcome you to the reporter's ministry. This is God and you. It's a telecast where we investigate the God-ordained things in the body of Christ. The things that pertains to God in his church, the body of Christ, in the assembly of the believers in Christ. So this is where we know the things that God has ordained and the things that he has not ordained. This is where we find out about the truth, the truth of the gospel and the, the things that pertains to sound doctrine. And I want to welcome all our returning viewers. Thank you for staying with us. We are starting a little late today. But we thank God that we are able eventually to bring you today's message. So today I will be continuing from where I stopped last week. And so today we are looking at the true church versus the first church, her, her structure. So today we are looking at the promotion, the promotion, the part two of the promotion, which is the part five of the entire message, true church versus church, first church, part five. But for the promotion, we're looking at the part two today. I was asking and answering a question last week that how did the woman in Revelation 17, how did she become um, that great? Where did she receive the glory from? Who gave her the position that she is leveraging on? So who gave her that position? Was it God? Was it the devil? Was it by own making? And last week I began to answer the question that it is God who has given her such a leverage, such a position, such a class. And I said to you last week that the devil does not build anything. The devil only hijacks things. And I quoted John chapter 10, verse 10. I told you that the devil comes on the thief, rather. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief cometh not but to steal. So there is something for him to steal and to kill. There is something for him to, to annihilate and to destroy. So the devil does not own these things. God owns everything. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and everything that is in it. So the devil only pollutes things and make the people of God the enemy of God to serve his purpose. Why is the devil doing all this? Because he knew that there is no mercy for him. He's going to be destroyed in the lake of fire on the day of judgment. And he wants to be he wants to make sure that he deceives as many as possible people so that he can drag them into the lake of fire with him. So, did the devil really hate God that much? No, the devil hates you that much. It is insane for the devil to hate God and say, I hate God. How can you hate somebody that you cannot, you cannot confront or withstand? But the devil hates you that much. In Revelation chapter 12, the Bible told us in the book of Revelation chapter 12 that the devil knows that he has only but a little time, so he went after the seed of the woman. Revelation 12, I want to read from verse 12 and following. Revelation 12, verse 12 and following. Therefore rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So why is the devil so angry? Why was he so angry? And why is he still so angry? Because Abu actually said that having a great wrath, 
the devil has a great role. He knew he had only but a short time. That was why he was angry. My time is limited. I'm going to be destroyed very soon. So I will make sure that I drag as many as possible people to myself. Glory be to God forevermore. Go to verse 17 of Revelation chapter 12. Verse 17. Again, you will see the anger of the devil. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Did you see that? The devil was not angry with God. He cannot be angry with God. That's foolishness on his part. That's foolishness on his part. But he was angry with Israel, who gave back to the church. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the dragon was wrong with the woman, not with God, but with the woman. She was angry with Israel. The dragon was angry with Abraham, was angry with Isaac, was angry with Jacob, was angry with Joseph, was angry with David, was angry with Mary, was angry with Rebecca, was angry with Rachel. The dragon was angry with everyone that has been a follower and people who have come to love God with all their heart so that the purpose of God can come to pass. The devil was angry with them. He was angry with the nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel, the holy ones that gave birth to the church by which Christ our Messiah came through and that gave birth to the church, the 12 apostles, the 120 disciples, the 3,000 converts in the Acts chapter 2, the 5,000 converts in Acts chapter 3 and chapter 4, the multitudes in Acts chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7 and following. He went out to make war with the remnant of our seed, which keep the commandments of God. And how does the devil fight? How does he fight the, the church and the woman? Through deception. Through deception. So they can, they can turn away from God. So that he can deceive them. That's how he defeated Adam in the Garden of Eden. He cannot destroy Adam. All he needed to do is to make Adam to sin against God. So this woman in the book of Revelation chapter 17 was exalted by God. God was actually her promotion. And you remember the psalm which says that promotion does not come from the south or from the east or from the west. So every promotion that is received on the earth is granted by God. But that promotion may be used for unholy things. They may be used for unholy things. Glory be to God forevermore. They may be used for unholy things. They may be used for uh, wicked things. But God has chosen to bless his people. Even Israel, when they go to the promised land, they, they turned away from God and follow after devils. They followed after devils and they were worshipping idols and all forms of um, abominable things. But God, who made all things in his own kindness and benevolence, you know, always receive that uh, the devil is after the people. So God really loved us and the devil is the one that truly hated us. Glory be to God forevermore. And hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. So promotion does not come from the from the north, it doesn't come from the from the south, it doesn't come from the uh, promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Let me read it, put it according to context in Psalm 75, verse 6. For promotion cometh not, neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Glory be to God. What is the promotion of this woman? God. We looked at Ezekiel chapter 16 and verses 10 to 13. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 10 to 13. And I show you the initial adornment of this woman. The initial adornment of this woman. From last week, we have seen that in her initial adornment, she was covered by God with brothered work. Brothered work. And that brothered work actually means variegation. 
to the addition of colors, varieties of colors. So this woman was dressed in clothes of many colors, just like Joseph, clothes of many colors, just like the daughters of the king of, uh, of Israel, clothes of many colors. You know, just like the priest, in the, the high priest in the temple of the living God, clothes of many colors. She's not a priest. She's not the beloved of the father like Joseph was. And she is not a virgin like the daughter of a king, um, King David. She was not a virgin. However, initially she had this variegation of colored clothes on her body. It is called brothered works. Brother works. Glory be to God forevermore. Brother works. Acts um, Ezekiel 16, verse, verse number 10. Ezekiel 16 and verse number 10. Verse number 10. If you look at Brother works and you check the Hebrew, it is called Rikma. Rikma. And it means variegation of color specifically embroidery. So it's also diverse colors and raiment of needlework on both sides and so on and so forth. If you look at First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 2, you will see brothered works, how it was used. Brothered works usage. Glory be to God. So brothered works in Ezekiel 16 is actually... Um, uh, diverse colors, diverse colors. Blessed be the name of the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 2. I will be using much of this term, brothered works of variegation of colors, so you must have it at the back of Is whereby the glory of the Lord um, is put in such a way that it can be handled by ordinary man. That's the function of a barger's king. 
the, the ark of testimony is the presence of God. The, 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 the cherubims are on it, are standing on the mercy seat, and the ark of um, the, the testaments of God are inside this ark. And no one can touch it. Nobody can touch it. No one should touch it. If you touch it, you will have it will have their consequences. But if you wrap it in a badger skin, then uh, people can still handle it. And the ark of God's testimony, the ark of God's, um, the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness is also covered with badger skin so that people can relate with it. Those that want to claim can claim because of the skin that is covering it. And this badger skin is the type of the flesh of Jesus. Jesus is not a human being. Jesus is God. But Jesus put on flesh. The word of God says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus put on flesh, the flesh of a human being. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, and I would like to read um, a verse for you there. Hebrews chapter 2, I would like to read verse 14, Hebrews 2, 14. I'm talking about Bajah's king and the importance of Bajah's king. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So Jesus was clothed with flesh and blood. He is God. But because of the skin, the humanity that he puts on, we can touch him, we can relate with him and not die. Even if you see an angel in the, in the time of old, uh, you are liable to death, not to talk of seeing God. God said to Moses, nobody see my face and leave. And now God is going to come to us. Emmanuel, God with us, is going to come to us. He has to come in a human form so that we can look to Jesus' face and even crucify him. And yet nothing is going to happen to anyone. This is the function of a badger skin. A badger skin helps you to handle supernatural things. Supernatural things, even as a natural being. Glory be to God forevermore. So God gave this woman badger skin and fine linen and silk and ornaments and all that he did. For them, glory be to God. Exodus chapter 36 and verse 19. I already said it, but I'm just going to quote this scripture for you. It's very important that you know the function of this thing. So when you see by just skin, it's talking about a type of the skin of the body of Jesus. A type of Jesus' flesh. By just skin. Exodus 36 and verse 19. And he made a covering for the tent of rams, kings, dyed red. That's king number one. And a covering of badger skin above that. So the, the material used for the covering of the tent, the tabernacle of witness, is ram skin. But on top of that ram skin dyed red, there is a badger skin. Glory to God. Numbers chapter 4 and verses 4 to 14. Numbers chapter 4, verses 4 to 14. I'd like you to pay attention to the emphasis of God's word. Numbers chapter 4, verses 4 to 14. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath. In the tabernacle of, of the congregation, about the most holy things, about the most holy things. Praise God. And when the camp set it forward, Aaron shall come and his son, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of Bajah's skin and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof. For them to be able to carry the ark of testimony, you must cover it with badger skin. Verse 7. And upon the table of showbread, they shall spread a cloth of blue, and put thereon the dishes, and the spoons, and the bowls, and covers to cover with her. 
and the continual bread shall be thereon. Verse 8, And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of Baja's cane. Take note of that again. And shall put in the staffs thereof. Verse 9, And they shall take a cloth of blue, and cover the candlestick of the light, and his lambs, and his tongues, and his snuff dishes, and all the oil vessels thereof, wherewith they minister unto it. Verse 10. And they shall put it and all the vessels thereof within a covering of barja skins, and shall put it upon a bar. Verse 11. And upon the golden altar, they shall spread a cloth of blue, and cover it with coverings of barja skins, and shall put to the staves thereof. Verse 12. And they shall take all the instruments of ministry wherewith they minister in the sanctuary and put them in a cloth of blue and cover them with a covering of badger skins and shall put them on a bar. Verse 13. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. Verse 14, and they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, and the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread upon it a covering of badger skins, and put to the staves of it. Glory to God. So this woman was greatly adorned by God. Greatly adorned by God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I intentionally wanted to show you the importance of the brothered work and the badger skin that God gave to this woman. Hallelujah. Now let's look at what this woman did with what uh, God gave to her. What she did with what God gave to her. If you are online with us and you have a question at any time, Please uh, feel free to ask your question. We still have some few minutes before the end of the telecast. Glory be to God forevermore. And if you are not online with us and you ever have a question, please ask your question. They will be answered when we see them and replied in the comments section. I'm talking about her promotion and the part two of it for the part five of the general message. What did this woman do with her Garment. Before we go there, God has claimed that he gave her the promotion that she had. We have looked at Ezekiel 16. Now I want us to see another claim of God. Because the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be made established. Now let's consider Ezekiel 28 and verse 11 to 19. Ezekiel 28 verses 11 to 19. God saying, I promoted you. I promoted you. So we have looked at Jerusalem. Let's look at the king of Tyre. The king of Tyre. Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest of the sum, that means that you are perfect. You are perfect. You are complete. That's the meaning of thou sealest of the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. What was the Lord talking about? He said you are perfect because you are full of wisdom and you are excellent in comeliness. Perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. That is in our experience, in the king of Tyre's experience, king of Tyre has been in Eden, the garden of God. Many people have taken this scripture to refer to the devil. No, it doesn't refer to the devil. Uh, this is not a, um, what do they call this thing in literature now? It's not an allegory that speaks about the devil. This is not an allegory about Satan. Praise God. Satan was never in Eden, the garden of God. So, and other things I will show you from this scripture. 
that has been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in, in thee in the day that thou was created. Verse 14. Thou art the anointed hero, anointed cherub that cover it. So the king of Tyre is in charge of many things. She, um, he uh, covers, he protects, he protects his nation. He was a very mighty and a powerful a powerful uh, king. And I have said this so, that is, I have made you so great to be able to be a guardian for Tyre, the land of Tyre. I have said this so. That was upon the holy mountain of God. You are upon the holy mountain of God. You remember that Tyre and Jerusalem had good ties in the days of David. They had good ties. They are allies. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of stones of fire. All the precious stones that we have been talking about, topaz, um, sardius, diamond, beryl, onyx, they are sparkling stones. They are gems. Sparkling stones. So they are called the stones of fire. Luminous stones. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. That is, I will abase you. I will humble you. Not that I will send you down from heaven. I will abase you. I will lay thee before kings. And you know that God does not lay Satan before kings. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why I said that. I mean, verse 17 now. Right? Ezekiel 28, verse 17. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You know, this never happened to the devil. It never happened to the devil. But that happened to the king of Tyre because the king of Babylon destroyed him. He became nothing. He was dragged to the ground. He lost his power. He lost his control. Being a Kerub, he lost it. And I have also said to you, not, not here, I think it's on God in Celestial Church. I said that Kerub is not a name. Kerub is just a description. It means someone that protects. Glory be to God forevermore. Verse 18. Verse 18. Thou hast defied thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Glory to God. If it was the devil, everyone that has affiliation with the devil, connection with him, uh, business with the devil, we are born in the lake of fire. But this is a judgment before even the people that has business dealings with uh, the king of Tyre. Verse 19, we are going to seize all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shall thou be any more. Uh, okay, thou shalt be a terror, and never shall thou be any more. You have been great, you have been mighty, but this will cease from happening. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. So you see from the Ezekiel 28 verse 11 to 19, God clearly claimed this promotion concerning this king. He said, you, are, you seal it up the psalm. You are full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty. Let's see verse, uh, Ezekiel 28 verse 12 in the Amplified Bible. Ezekiel 28 verse 12. And uh, the image of perfection a type of the king of Tyros. Let's see what God did with people initially. What God did with people initially. Handled initially. Uh, I will read the verse 12 in the Amplified Bible. Verse 12 in the Amplified, in the Amplified Bible. 
Glory be to God. Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus said the Lord God, you are the full measure and pattern of exactness, giving the finishing touch to all that constitute completeness. Wonderful. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Glory to God. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Look at what God said again. Give the finishing touch to all that constitutes completeness. That's what King James calls you fill it up, this, you seal it up the sun. So let's look at the image of perfection. The image of perfection. This is what God did with everybody from the beginning. With every human being, especially in Adam. And for those people who used to think that Ezekiel 28 is about the devil, it's even much more about Adam than even the devil. It was Adam who was in the garden. It was Adam who was excellent. God said, good, I made it good. It was Adam who was um, uh, uh, working in uh, excellency, glories, fiery stones. There are so many beautiful things in the Garden of Eden. It was actually Adam who fell away from there. And so, but in context, it was a reference to um, the king of Tyre, not the devil, not the devil. One has been in the Garden of Eden. God said, that's what you have done. I, be, I made you beautiful. I put you in a pleasant situation. I put you in abundance. I put you in prosperity. That's what Garden of Eden represents. It represented abundance, prosperity, no lack. You don't need anything. You have everything you wanted in the Garden of Eden. Even if you don't have clothes, the glory of God is covering you. You have access to fellowship with God. You can eat all manners of things in the Garden. And two, God said, precious stones he has given for thy covering. And they are sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. The devil at every point in time has learned to, to deceive the people of God and turn them to evil people. To deceive them and make them evil. Glory be to God forevermore. It's going to be a long teaching. But if God wills, and as even he wills and the Spirit wills, I'll be back next week to show you what this woman did with all the adornment that God has given to her. I will leave you with this charge, this exhortation. Whatever you have now is from God. God is the one that does good for people. The word of God says in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift are from above. And they come from the Father of lights. Every good gift and every perfect gift, they are from above. We write Jaman, and they come from the come down from the Father of all that gives light. And in the shining of whom there can be no variation or shadow of turning. Glory be to God forevermore. So God is ready to promote you. But when this promotion comes, what is going to happen? Remember the word of the Lord about Israel. He said, Jesurun became fat and kid. He said, thou became fat and you kid. You become thickened. And now you have forsaken your God. Now you have forsaken your God. Jesurun became fat. I will find that scripture for you and close with that scripture today as an exhortation while I bring you the word of God about how this woman wasted the blessings of God. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I want to read from verse, verse 12. I want to read from verse 12. Deuteronomy 32. I will read from verse 12 and following. Deuteronomy 22 verse 12 and following. So the Lord alone did lead him, that's Israel, 
And there was no strange God with him. Israel was still holy that time, consecrated unto God. No idol, no idolatrous work, perfect. Verse 13, he made him ride on high places of the earth. You see the promotion that God gave to Israel? He made him ride on high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the field. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Verse 14, butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams and of the breed of Basha and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Verse 15. But Jesurun waxed fat and kid. Wow. That is, kid means to despise, to go against someone. Kid, thou art waxed in, waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him. May this not be your, your, your end in Jesus' name. May this never be your end, viewers. May you end well with God. He forsook God, which made him, not the devil, but God. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. What will you do? When you become a millionaire, a billionaire, when you have all the houses, all the blessings, all the wealth, when you have a job, when you are now married, when you win the contract, when you are now the president or the governor, what will you do? What will you do? Will you kick? Many have done in the past. Kicked against their God. May you remember this scripture and learn from it. May God be with you and bless you. And as we come back your way next week, may the Lord keep your home. In Jesus' name. Return with us next week as I show you what this woman did with her adornment. God be with you. Amen. Amen.